John Williamson is five foot six, or five foot five rather. He weighs 150 pounds, has blonde hair, green eyes, and MBA from Harvard, and average work experience. Now let's take a look at applicant B. William Johnson is a six foot male, weighing 175 pounds, brown hair, brown eyes, MBA from Stanford, and also average work experience. Now, based on these facts alone, make the quick decision, which would you hire? Can I get a show of hands for applicant A? <laughs> show of hands for applicant B? Right, so by the overwhelming majority, for those of you who chose William Johnson, you're in agreement with numerous hiring boards across the globe. But do we know why? We can give most credit to the cliche, tall, dark, and handsome. In a 2004 edition of the Journal of Applied Psychology, it was shown by Timothy Judge and Daniel Kugel that on average, a man who is six feet tall will earn $5,525 more annually than someone who is five foot six. Now, while this may seem like a small annual difference, in five or six years, Mr. Johnson will be dreaming of luxuries that Mr. Williamson could never afford. Coming from a family of giants, I've always been aware of the downside of being tall, but after doing some research, I realized that there are many positive benefits, especially in the professional world. And as college students about to go out and face the real world, it's good to know which factors are working for and against you when applying for jobs. So today, I'd like to discuss with you the origins, psychological and societal reasons, and the effects of the high income stereotype. These origins stem from the evolutionary and developmental habits that we form both as an individual and as a species. Take the earliest historical example of that in animals. Consider that scene in a movie where a bear approaches a campground scene and inevitably he's going to rise on his hind feet to pose a threat to those dwelling there. Animals use height as an indication of power and strength in making fight or flight decisions. Historical examples also provide the admiration of tall stature. In Nancy Atkoff's book, Survival of the Prettiest, she notes that King William III of England had his door knockers placed above eye level so that those who visited would feel short and inferior and thus see him as tall and superior. Another historical example is in the phrase Napoleon Complex, which we know is attributed to the 5'3 Napoleon Bonaparte and his adoption of over-aggressive tactics to compensate for his lack of height and power. Focus on childhood development plays another key argument of researchers. In a study done by Anne Case and Christina Paxson in the 2008 article of journal, the Journal of Political Economy, they showed that taller children often receive greater cognitive stimulation than shorter children. Now this may be due to the fact that teachers pay more attention to taller students, or rather, that taller students are often enrolled earlier than shorter children of the same age. Children even subconsciously assign status to stature when they show that both in their jargon and in their actions, that height is favored. Consider when you were a child and you measured yourself against your peer. You often skewed your height to make yourself seem a little bit taller. Or how you refer to your role models as people that you look up to. Now that we've taken a look at some of the roots of the stereotype, let's take a look at some of the psychological and societal reasons. Judge notes one important association in relation to academics, and case impacts and support this sentiment when they show that as early as age three, taller children are performing better on cognitive examinations than shorter children. Now, while this trend is slight, it does give reason for why higher paying jobs are attracting taller job applicants, who are more able to perform the verbal and numerical tasks enabled by their higher intelligence. Subjective notions of beauty also play into the formation of this stereotype. In a study of personal ads, it was shown that 80% of women who mentioned height wanted a man who was six feet or taller. Now, this statistic is limited by its relativity. In the Linda Jackson and Kelly Irwin piece in the 1992 Journal of Social Psychology, they showed that while short men like tall women, the converse is often false. We tall women tend to find short men less socially attractive. The final societal input is that of height, dominance, status, and power that this image often creates. Eckhoff reveals that our personal association of height with power is so deeply ingrained in our minds that we automatically assume that powerful people are big people. There have been numerous studies done in which students are asked to identify the height of a speaker who is introduced by their status, say, student, uh, chief lecturer, professor at a university, and it is shown that the student's predictions of these heights increase as the person's status increases. These findings are important because we're not immune to the way that others view us. In fact, we tend to take on the attributes that society assigns to us. Now let's take a look at some of the concrete results of this stereotype. Actual earnings are affected, as I mentioned, with the $5,525 favorable difference.
rights earlier in the speech. But there's a disclaimer. While this applies to men, it's not so prevalent in women, so we tall women don't get the benefit of height as much as tall males do. Certain occupations also demand taller job applicants, which creates this image that promotes the stereotype. Let's take a look at this table by judge, which shows the height income correlation by occupation. What I want you to take away from this is that the highest benefit of height is in sales, and this is all going to attribute to the fact that taller men are often seen as more persuasive than shorter men, merely due to their stature. Judge also quotes a Lester and Sheehan piece which shows that <coughs> shorter police officers receive more complaints, cause more disciplinary problems, and overall engender poor morale than taller police officers. Judge reveals the true nature of the height success trend when he says that the logic behind his models reveals that although height may not be closely related to subjective no notions of performance, it is related to less so objective results. So while height may ensure your wage level, not necessarily your wage growth. These psychological and societal reasons are important because they contribute to this theory of subjectivity and also provide reasons for the effects of this stereotype. So, are taller people really nicer, prettier, better at leading others? Probably not. But over time, society has knighted these giants. Whether or not these associations are valid really depends on the unique individual. But the truth remains. Height is not the worthless variable in the formula for success. It doesn't necessarily guarantee success, but it does make us wonder, what's so great about William Johnson? Thank you. <laughs>